Welcome to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and today we're going to discover the Messiah's exaltation. Seven hundred years after Isaiah penned his prophecy about the suffering Messiah, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But the prophet didn't just describe the Messiah's suffering, he also talked about his exaltation. And right now, Rabbi Schneider is going to address what Jesus' oppression, his death, and his resurrection means for you and me. Our message comes from our series on Isaiah and Messianic prophecy. And now let's turn to chapter 53 in the book of Isaiah, Here's Rabbi Schneider to open in prayer. Father, we ask you to open our ears and our hearts today to receive your word implanted deep into the inner man. Hear the word, beloved one, the seventh verse. Speaking of Jesus, Isaiah said, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to slaughter and like a sheep that is silent before its shears, so he did not open his mouth. What is Isaiah revealing here? He's telling us that when Messiah comes before the wicked on this earth, he's gonna come against all types of accusations, all types of cursing, all types of threats. And how will he respond, Isaiah tells us? He's not even going to open his mouth. We find in the Gospel of John in fulfillment of this, the 19th chapter, the ninth verse, as the accusers are lambasting Jesus with all these accusations, we read there, listen, but Jesus gave, listen, no answer. And I love this next fulfillment, Matthew chapter 27, verses number 12 through 14. Hear how this was fulfilled, listen. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. He was accused and he didn't, Isaiah said, open his mouth. Now we see it playing out exactly like Isaiah revealed it would hundreds and hundreds of years earlier. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they testify against you? Now listen to what happened next. And he did not answer him with regard to even a single charge. So the governor was quite amazed. I love what Jesus did here. It was so powerful that the world had turned on him, that all the powers of darkness had seized him, and yet Jesus was as cool as a cucumber. He didn't try to defend himself. He didn't even respond. He was in control, beloved ones, even when he was on the cross. Jesus lived in victory above it all, and here his supernatural victory was displayed when he didn't even respond. So once again, Isaiah tells us that he was like a lamb before the slaughter, yet he did not open his mouth. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. He did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that is silent before its shears, Isaiah said, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut out from the land of the living for the transgression of my people to whom the stroke was due. What is the Lord saying here? The Lord is saying here that no one understood that everything that was happening to him was really happening to him because he was taking the penalty for my people. And so we read once again from the book of Matthew 27 through 31. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole Roman cohort around him. Remember, Isaiah just got done telling us that by oppression and judgment, he was taken away. So what we're reading of here in the book of Matthew is that Jesus was taken away into the praetorium and the Roman people were around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand, and they knelt down before him, mocked him, saying, Hey, O king of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and began to beat on him and on his head. After they had mocked him, they took the scarlet robe off him and put his own garments back on him. Now listen to this. And led him away to crucify him. What did Isaiah say? By oppression 
and judgment, he was taken away. And how is it fulfilled? They came and they led him away to crucify him. Hear me. The New Testament writer, the writer of the Gospels in the New Testament that most frequently quotes from the Old Testament that we call in Hebrew the Tanakh, the New Testament Gospel writer that most frequently quotes from the Old Testament is Matthew. And the Old Testament prophet that Matthew quotes most often is Isaiah. And we're seeing all this fully played out here. You see, the Bible tells us that when Jewish people like myself come to faith in Jesus, this is from Romans chapter 11, it's going to be like life from the dead for the church. That's what I'm breathing on you right now. I'm breathing on you the revelation, beloved one, of the God of Israel. You're a chosen one if you're Jesus is. You're a chosen one, and God wants to gird our loins with truth so we can withstand the pressure that we're facing in this culture that we're living in. More and more Christians are backing off. They're saying, you know what, I, I believe in Jesus, but if you don't believe in Jesus, I understand. We can still be married. It's okay. I mean, this is my preference, but I understand that other people have different preferences, so who am I to judge? But you see, when you really believe that Jesus is the only way, and faith in that comes when you see how the New Testament is rooted in the Old Testament, that's how you know that Jesus is the only way. Because the Old Testament brings us the revelation that there's only one God, and the New Testament brings us the revelation that Jesus is the one way from the one true God. And this New Testament revelation that Jesus is the only way from the one true God was foretold in the Old Testament. When you understand that, you're not going to let the culture around you cause you to become compromised and lukewarm about your faith. But rather, you'll gain the fire that you need to keep on living for the Lord and to keep on boldly witnessing to the world that no man come to the Father, as Jesus said, but by him. So I pray and trust that your faith is being strengthened today, that you won't back off from naming the name of Jesus as the only name given unto man by which he can be saved, and that you'll continue to be a bold witness and to walk strong in faith, beloved one, into the end. This is why it's so important to understand the Hebrew roots of our Christian faith. It grounds us. I have never, by the grace of God, never in almost 40 years of walking with the Lord, I have never doubted that Jesus is the Messiah. Why? Through revelation of the Spirit and because I see how Jesus was revealed in the Old Testament. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, and Rabbi will be right back. But first, did you know that you can receive real-time encouragement straight from Rabbi through text message? Visit discoveringthejewishjesus.com and click on the link that says Rabbi Text Me. Or you can text the keyword Rabbi to the number 88777. Rabbi sends these special text messages as the Holy Spirit leads, and he looks forward to connecting with you real soon. Did you know that this ministry is all about preparing the way for the inevitable return of King Jesus? Well, it's true, and we'd love for you to partner with us in this life-changing mission today. Together, we will change lives, not just locally, but all over the world. To support this team, call 800-777-7835. That's 800-777-7835. Or you can visit us online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And now here's Rabbi Schneider. Let's continue on here with the ninth verse. Isaiah chapter 53 now, verse number nine. His grave, speaking of Jesus, his grave was assigned with wicked men, yet he was with a rich man in his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit found in his mouth. What's the point here? It says that Jesus was with wicked men, Isaiah said, in his death. How was Jesus with wicked men in his death? He was with wicked men in his death because when he was crucified, beloved one, there was a thief on his one side and a thief on the other side. He was crucified with two wicked men surrounding him. But what happened afterwards? After Jesus had died, the rich man Joseph asked for his body, and they permitted Joseph to take Jesus' body. Again, Joseph was a rich man, and he put Jesus in his own tomb that he had prepared for himself. So once again, we see Isaiah's prophecy being fulfilled that Jesus was with wicked men when he died, crucified in between two thieves, 
And then he was buried in a rich man's tomb in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. Let me just read them for you very, very quickly here. So you can take notes here and gather this information for future use. Matthew 27, verse 38. Two robbers were crucified with them, one on the right, one on the left. And then in Matthew 27, verse 57 through 60, we read this. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself had become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Yeshua. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a large stone against the entrance of the tomb and went away. And so we just see the entire process from Jesus' crucifixion to where he was going to minister at, to the fact that he was going to take our sin in his own body on the tree, that he was going to be crucified between two wicked men, that he'd be buried in a rich man's tomb, All of it was revealed in the book of Isaiah and the New Testament writers kept quoting Isaiah when they told the story of Jesus, showing us how Jesus fulfilled Isaiah's prophecy. Let's look at Isaiah now, chapter number 53, once again, verse 10 and 11. Here we go. But the Lord was pleased to crush him, putting him to grief. If he would render himself as a guilt offering, he will see his offspring. He will prolong his days and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see it and be satisfied. By his knowledge, the righteous one, my servant, will justify the many as he will bear their iniquities. Once again, Isaiah 53, verse 10 through 11. What's the point? Isaiah is prophesying here the substitutionary sacrificial death of Jesus the Messiah. That even though it costs Jesus and it costs the Father so much, They take pleasure in it because of what it gained. It gained the salvation, beloved ones, of God's elect. And so we read in Romans chapter 5, verse 19, as the fulfillment. For it's through the one man's disobedience, speaking of Adam, in Adam, everyone that was born after him because they were his lineage was born into sin. So this is what Paul was speaking of here. For it's through the one man's disobedience, The many were made sinners, even so, Paul said, through obedience of the one, speaking of Messiah Jesus, the many will be made righteous. Revelation 1, 17 and 18 speaks to the same truth. John says this, when I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man. And he placed his right hand on me saying, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. In other words, God said it cost so much, the anguish that my servant went through. It was so hard. It was so agonizing. But we delight in it because of what it accomplished. It accomplished the salvation of the world, all those that would put faith in his name. Let's continue on in verse number 12. Therefore, Isaiah says, speaking on the Lord's behalf. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great and he will divide the booty with the strong because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he himself bore the sin of many and interceded for the transgressors. This is saying once again, the same thing that he's been given, the scripture tells us in the New Testament, that Jesus has been given the name above all names because he was obedient even to the point of death. Therefore, God has given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hear the book of Revelation chapter five, beginning in verse number six. Once again, John is speaking. I saw between the throne with the four living creatures and the elders, a lamb standing as if slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. When he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb each one holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, 
Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals. For you were slain and purchased for God with your blood, men from every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom of priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, and the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was myriads of myriads, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And every created thing which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and under the sea and all things in them I heard saying to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. And the four living creatures kept saying, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. And so this is what Isaiah was prophesying once again in Isaiah 53, verse 11. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see it and be satisfied by his knowledge. The righteous men, my servant, will justify the many. And that's what we just got done reading about in the book of Revelation, in the book of Romans. Because of what Jesus did, beloved, the one that was a sinner, has now been made righteous and the guilty has now been proclaimed innocent. The captive has been set free. This is why at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and come confess that he is Lord. And this is why he's worshiped in heaven the way that he is. I want to sum everything up by bringing you to the book of Acts to bring us to a story that really shows us how much God intended us to see his son revealed in the book of Isaiah. As we go to the book of Acts, we find there was an Ethiopian eunuch. He didn't know God. He wasn't Jewish, but he wanted to know God. And he was reading a copy of the scriptures. He was reading a copy, beloved, of the scroll of Isaiah. Let's pick up now and hear what happened. So when they had solemnly testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they started back to Jerusalem and they were preaching the gospel to many villages of the Samaritans. This is about the apostles, how they're going about preaching and they're going to many villages in the Samaritan region there. But an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, get up, go south to the road that descends from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road. So he got up and went and there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure, and he had come to Jerusalem to worship. And he was returning and sitting in his chariot, listen now, and was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go up and join the chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, well, how could I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of scripture which he was reading was this. He was led as a sheep to slaughter and as a lamb before a shear is silent. So he does not open his mouth. In humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who will relate his generation? For his life is removed from the earth. The eunuch answered Philip and said, please tell me of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or of someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and began from the scripture preaching Jesus to him. As they went along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, water, what prevents me from being baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And he ordered the chariot to stop and they both went down into the water, Philip as well, and he baptized him. The whole point, beloved, you see, how those that wrote the New Testament so drew off of the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, to prove that Jesus is the Messiah. You and I may live 2,000 years later, but God wants to strengthen your faith and my faith by being able to pull out of the Hebrew Bible. In the book of Matthew, chapter 13, Jesus said this. He said, every scribe, and a scribe was someone that made copies of the Old Testament, Jesus said, every scribe that becomes a disciple of mine will be able to draw out of his house treasures old and new. I hope that I'm being a blessing and helping you to draw more treasure out of the Hebrew Bible. 
out of the Old Testament. Because what we're doing here at Discovering the Jewish Jesus is helping God's people see how the Old and New Testaments fit together like a hand in a glove. And as you and I, beloved ones, understand the Hebrew roots of our Christian faith, our own faith will be strengthened and we're going to become more powerful witnesses equipped to share the good news of the gospel with both Jew and Gentile alike. Jesus said in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 17 and 18, these words, Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich. You see, the people in the church of Laodicea that he was addressing here, they thought they were wealthy, but they didn't know God. They didn't love God. Jesus said, I advise you to buy from me pure gold. Beloved ones, I want to encourage you, don't let your money separate you from God. And I say the same thing to myself. Jesus talked a lot about the relationship between God and money or God and mammon because he knew that man had to make a choice. Would he choose God or would he choose money? I want to encourage you to believe God and trust him with your finances. Beloved, when we're faithful to God with our finances, it sets the rest of our life in order with him. If God is calling you to give a gift of any amount to support Discovering the Jewish Jesus, would you do that today, right now? You can get in touch with us first by going online to discoveringthejewishjesus.com, and we're truly grateful for your financial support and your prayers. You can also give today by calling us at 800-777-7835. That's 800-777-7835. And you can also give by text just by typing the keyword rabbi to the phone number 45777 and then follow the instructions that you received back from us. And you know, we love knowing that people around the world are exploring the depths of the Old and New Testaments with Rabbi each day. And we also understand this ministry could never have that kind of reach without your faithful support. So as a token of our appreciation for your generosity, we'll send you Rabbi Schneider's message of the month. It's available as a digital download as well. And then we'll make sure that our latest newsletter also arrives in your mailbox. And finally, if you're interested in learning to hear God's voice more clearly, Rabbi addresses this in a free gift that we would love to send to you. Get ready to have your spiritual ears become more attuned to God's voice. And this audio download is yours free today when you request it online at myfreegift.com forward slash hearing. It's a guide to hearing God's voice. And once again, you'll find it at myfreegift.com forward slash hearing. Then, as always, we close our program with a special blessing from Rabbi Schneider. And so we hope these sacred words leave you feeling refreshed and inspired. The ironic blessing in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, is not a blessing that comes from an impersonal being out there somewhere in the heavens. This special blessing comes from a person, Yahweh, God Almighty, our creator and maker. So receive God's blessing into your life right now. Yava Rechechi Yahweh Vayishma Recha Yair Yahweh Penave Lecha Vihunecha Yisa Yahweh Penavelecha Veasem Lecha Shalom The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance. And the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. God bless you and shalom. Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries, and I'm your host, Dustin Roberts. Come back tomorrow when Rabbi Schneider tells us about friends, servants, and victors in God. That's Wednesday on Discovering the Jewish Jesus.